Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Gittleson and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Virtue Poker. Before I get into how Virtue Poker works, I'm going to tell the history of online poker through a hypothetical recreational poker player named Joe Poker. Joe hails from Canada. He is 34 years old. Uh, he has a relatively low skill, so he's a net loser, unfortunately. And he plays relatively frequently between five to six times per month. He was active from the years 2003 to 2015. So the poker boom ignited in 2003 when an unknown accountant named Chris Moneymaker won the World Series of Poker main event for $2.5 million after winning his $10,000 entry fee by winning an $86 satellite event on PokerStars. This fantasy, this fairy tale story was broadcast on ESPN and ignited tens of millions of players from all around the world to log on and create accounts and play online poker. Millions of players, just like Joe Poker, decided to give it a shot to win big. The problem with this structure was that a few small oper a few operators stored tens of millions of dollars worth of player deposits and held them in trust. But players like Joe, po Joe Poker were more than happy to deposit on these sites because they wanted to have a ch shot to win big. Unfortunately for players like Joe Poker, there were a few scandals that hit the online poker industry over the course of 2007 to 2009. The most famous of which was this absolute poker scandal where a company insider was able to hack, gain access to a master account that allowed him to view all of the players' cards on the platform. Him and along with his co-conspirators won about 14 standard deviations above the mean and were able to steal $14 million from players on these platforms over the course of the scam and there was absolutely no recourse for the, for the poker operators who maintained this software. In 2006, the UIGEA was passed in the United States, which is the Unlawful Internet Gaming Enforcement Act. This made it illegal for any banks and payment processors to process payments in relation to gaming activity. What happened was many operators chose to still operate in the US market. And then in 2011, the US finally took action against these operators and seized the domains of the three largest poker sites, Absolute Poker, Full Tilt, and PokerStars. It was discovered that Full Tilt was operating a Ponzi scheme. Essentially what was happening is they were taking player deposits and using them to pay for operational expenses. When the DOJ seized Full, T Full Tilt's bank accounts, it was discovered they had a $350 million shortfall. So players like Joe were left to log into their account to realize all of their money was gone. Beyond this, online poker continued, but there were third-party software tools that professional poker players employed to give them an edge against recreational players like Joe Poker. These tools included heads-up displays and auto-seeding software that would allow them to gain additional information and honestly just totally beat these players who logged on to try to play online. Joe realized he was being bum-hunted and his opponents knew his exact skill in playing behavior. Finally, after all of these different scandals and these third-party tools, Joe decided he, want, he, quit, he was going to quit playing online. The problem is when recreational poker players like Joe Poker quit playing online, it led to a struggling poker economy. The online poker economy is based on three things, player deposits, player withdrawals, and the rake that the operators take. If recreational players like Joe Poker don't deposit at a faster rate then the operators take rake and the professional players withdraw from the site, the poker economy shrinks. So what's the problem? How can we get players like Joe Poker back to play online? Well, the problem is recreational players don't trust online poker. And they don't trust it because of three core reasons. First is they don't trust centralized storage of player deposits. They don't trust the centralized random number generator, which is the source of randomness to shuffle the deck for all hands played on the platform. And they don't, and recreational poker players just want a chance to have fun playing online and have a shot at winning big. They don't want to be bum hunted by professional poker players. So what's the solution? Uh, the Virtue Poker platform. So what is Virtue Poker? Uh, Virtue Poker is a consensus incubated spoke. Uh, we got started in about 2016. And we are a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized poker platform that leverages cryptography, peer-to-peer -peer networking, and blockchain technology to create a safe and secure online poker experience. Our goal is to remove player deposit risk, solve the trust issue regarding gameplay fairness, and create a fair and balanced poker network. Really, our ultimate goal is to get the dormant Joe Pokers of the world to play on our site. So 
one of the uh, new innovations that we have uh, recently implemented was we use uh, Ethereum for high volume transactions and high uh, for on uh, the Virtue Poker mainnet for deposit and withdrawal, and we use a Virtue Poker employed sidechain to handle all the gaming transactions. So the interaction is a user creates an account and it specifies the source of funds wallet address on Ethereum. He deposits into a mainnet contract that mints the equivalent amount of tokens, which is credited to his application wallet in the Virtue Poker sidechain. When the players go to buy into a game, they submit their buy into a custom smart contract on the Virtue Poker sidechain that includes the custom game parameters. For example, let's say it's a three person tournament and the buy in was 10 Ether each, and it's first place winning 20 Ether and second place winning 10 Ether. That custom con smart contract is deployed on the Virtue Poker sidechain, and all players submit their buy in to that contract, which is held in escrow while the game is being played. At the end of the tournament, when all of the, when all of the chip totals besides one reach zero, the contract knows to auto execute and pays out the winning players back into their wallet. And we employ a peer to peer card shuffling protocol that involves all players in card shuffling for every hand played on the platform. And the way this works is as follows. Let's say we have Bob, Alice, and Joe playing on Virtue Poker, and Bob is the dealer. He starts and creates a deck of cards on his machine. He shuffles the deck on his computer and then encrypts them, making the deck unreadable to the other players. He passes the deck to Alex, who goes through the same process, shuffles the deck, and encrypts the deck. Alice then passes the deck to Joe, who does the same thing. So the deck is now in its final ordered state and has been shuffled by all three players. Bob then removes his shuffle lock that he had put on every single card and encrypts each individual card with a different encryption key. You can think of this as B1, B2, all the way down to B52. He passes the deck to Alice, who does the same thing, removes her shuffle lock and places an individual encryption key on each card, A1, A2, all the way down to A52. She passes the deck to Joe, who does the same thing. The deck now has been encrypted with an individual encryption key by each player. Let's say Bob is assigned cards one and two in the deck. He possesses his encryption keys for those cards, but he doesn't possess Alice and Joe's. So Alice and Joe share the corresponding keys for, the, for Bob's particular cards so he can view them and no one else, and vice versa. All players share encryption keys for community cards so all players can view them. And this process continues until the hand is completed. Now, one thing I should mention is, while a lot of this sounds complicated, all of this occurs in the background. The look and feel of Virtue Poker is what a player would come to expect on traditional online poker sites. So where did we come from and where are we going? Uh, so while we've been around since 2016, uh, most of our development and growth has come starting from the beginning of 2018 last year. We completed our phase one token sale in May of 2018, where we sold 100 million VPP tokens for 25,000 Ether, which at the time was about $18.5 million. We partnered with some of the world's most famous poker pros, including Phil Ivey, Dan Coleman, and Brian Rast. We launched a private beta in May of 2019, and we had 2,000 players sign up and over half a million hands played on the platform between the beginning of May and the end of June. And we're excited to announce that next month we're going to be launching an open beta, and our goal is to acquire over 10,000 players. We have a gaming license application pending in Malta where we are domiciled, and we, if approved, will be the first blockchain-based poker site to get a, block, a DLT license from Malta. So what is Virtue Poker's potential? Uh, we solve a problem in a real target market, and through our decentralized framework, we're able to operate with lower operational costs. Uh, through the combination of Ethereum mainnet contracts and the Virtue Poker operated sidechain, we no longer have any Ethereum dependencies, so we're able to operate at scale. And we hope to create a bridge to mainstream Ethereum adoption because there is significant overlap between the online gambling community and the cryptocurrency community. So we feel that there'll be less friction in us being able to penetrate that market. And our ultimate goal is to get players like Joe Poker to be a player on our site. Thank you very much.